and welcome back home build helps tip of the week this week we're going to talk about fabricating your own coaxial cables for your aircraft radios these cables are used for connecting the antenna to your communication radio to your ELT to your transponder and even more making your own cables can be fun and it's better because you can make them exactly the length you need rather than buying pre-made stock lengths that might be a little too long or a little too short. And you can make them just as professionally as the people you would pay to make them up. We're going to talk about which cable to use and how to get those ends on them. Get them on easily and professionally. Let's take a look first at what is the best coax cable to use in your aircraft. Here is the makeup of a typical coax cable. We are using the RG400 as our sample. The center conductor on the RG400 is stranded. The RG142 cable is identical to the RG400 with the exception that its center conductor is solid. We always prefer stranded given the choice. The center conductor is surrounded by an insulator called a dielectric that keeps the center and outer conductors apart at a very precise distance for the length of the cable. The outer conductor has an additional purpose of shielding the signals inside the cable from outside radiation as well as keeping the cable signals from leaking out of the cable. The cable is then covered in a protective non-conductive sheath. There are two popular choices of coax cables that tend to be used in most home-built aircraft. The RG400 series and the RG58 family of cables. Let's look at some of the characteristics between these two which will help you decide the best. Let's compare the two most popular cables side by side. Keep in mind that the RG58 column includes the family of cables designated RG58. Of great importance is the cable's ability to keep radio frequency signals inside the cable and to also shield the cable from outside noise and interference. The outer shield has this function and the RG400 has a literal double shield you can see if you look closely compared to the single shield of the RG58. When cables are routed near each other this shielding becomes even more important. The loss of a cable measures how much of the signal that goes in one end actually makes it to the other end. These numbers tell us how much attenuation of the signal is to be expected. The RG400 has a clear advantage of delivering a stronger signal. This becomes even more important at higher frequencies as those used for transponder signals. It is less significant at communication radio frequencies which are much lower. The composition of the dielectric insulator of the RG400 is Teflon which means in a fire all of that insulation will not burn into harmful gases. When RG58 burns you are burning propylene plastic resulting in fumes. Similarly the outer sheath of the RG400 was made to withstand high temperatures the RG58 not. The cost of RG400 is about three dollars a foot clearly more than the one dollar or less for the RG58. As a way to summarize these factors, be it said that RG400 is what avionics shops use for cabling your radios and RG58 will not be found in modern certified aircraft. Now that you have chosen your cable, the next step is to learn how to put on the terminations to each end. With our radios we typically use BNC type connectors and they come in different flavors, male, female, right angle, 
but we need to electrically and securely attach these to the ends. And part of the difficulty with that is learning to prepare the cable end so that it is cut back and exposed properly. And that, for a lot of people, is no fun. Let's take a look at how easy that can be. Our goal is to make a cut, actually a couple of cuts, that prepare the cable so that it looks something like this. We've cut back the sheath. We have the shielding exposed, a little bit of the dielectric, and then the center conductor. Now, getting the cable end to look like this can be relatively challenging or it can be very easy but once you get this we can then crimp on the connector the BNC connector let's look at how I prepared this end the easy way the key to making fast accurate cuts is to use a coaxial cable stripper tool this was very inexpensive it has a pivot point you can buy these almost anywhere, including Amazon. There's a number of adjustments you need to make once, and then once you've made those adjustments, making cables or stripping the cables in preparation for installing the BNCs is relatively easy. There is a device here that pulls out and can be rotated. There's little numbers along the edge. Inside, there are two blades. And if you look at the very bottom, there are two set screws. Those set screws determine how far the blades move up and how deep of a cut they make. So your adjustments are the two set screws to adjust how deep the blades cut. And then on the top, you will notice you can also adjust how far apart the cuts are made. There's a little picture of the shield of your coax because different connectors need different lengths. The way you adjust that is you remove the blades inside and separate them into various slots. So once you set those blades up the way you want in the various slots and you set the depth of the two blades, you are done. Let me demonstrate how quickly I can prepare coaxial cable end for RG400 so that we can crimp on the BNC connector. I simply cut off the end clean on my cable. Then after setting my adjustments, I simply squeeze, which will open the jaws and insert them into the jaws. And I bring them all the way till it's flush with the end. So I've just clamped it in there. I simply go around a couple times and remove. Now here's what happened. Those blades made two cuts. I'm going to get my fingernail into the first one and pull it off. There's the dielectric. And then there's a second cut. And I know this is a little bit hard to see on the camera. I'll get my nail into that and pull that off and you're almost done. The last cut you need to make is either with the razor blade or I use a wire cutter so that we can expose the right amount of the center conductor. Now you can use a razor blade. I have also calibrated my wire cutters here. It's pretty close to a number 16 wire. I want to leave about just shy of 1 8 inch of dielectric left. So, and we're almost ready to install the BNC. Now we're going to assemble a crimp-on BNC connector. There's basically three parts. The main body, and then a collar that's going to go around the shield. That will get crimped. And this tiny pin will go over the center conductor and that will get crimped. So there's basically two crimps, one for the center conductor and one for the collar that goes around the shield. The first step is I trimmed the center conductor so that it wasn't any longer than the body of the pin. 
And so now I'm simply going to insert the center conductor into the hollow area of the pin. And there I have the pin pushed onto the center conductor. We are now going to crimp that pin on so that it is permanent. Let's take a look at our crimping tools. Here is my ratcheting crimper. These are relatively inexpensive, about 30 some dollars. And the important thing is that they have replaceable dies. This set of dies installs with a couple of screws and basically has the dies for doing the center pin and then the collars of various coaxial cable sizes. And let's try the crimping on camera here. I'm going to insert it. So I have it pushed down as far as it will go and then I'm simply going to squeeze and it releases. That is now on there and you should always tug to make sure it won't come off. With this crimped on, our next step is simply to take the sleeve and slide it on over the cable, just like that. And then finally, we're going to take the body and slide that on, and this area here is going to go underneath the braid, and we're going to push it all the way underneath. So it goes all the way down and finally we're simply going to slip the sleeve and this is going to be a tight fit on this one all the way up and then crimp it. And this takes some force. And there I got it. Slide it all the way up to the end and now we're simply going to crimp this. crimp until it releases. You now have a professional BNC connection onto the RG400. I have left off some important details like the dimensions of how far you need to cut back the cable and things like that. And the reason is you need to go watch the professional make these cables. This is the same place that is going to sell you the proper crimping tool and dies if you don't already have one. He also sells the cable and the BNC connectors. Now I have no financial connection with him. It's just that Steiner has been serving the experimental aircraft market for a long time and seems like a good place to go. I bought stuff there and have been happy. So just my suggestion. But He's the professional, and if you look at the link below this video, I put a link of the video he made. You need to watch his video. He creates these cables using just a razor blade. Same principles that I showed. The difference is I had this little tool that automates those razor blades. But in his video, he gives you all the exact dimensions on how to cut it. It's just that if you like the way this tool works, I left another link of videos on how to set up this tool. Remember, you have to set the blades properly, and once they're set, they will forever make the proper cuts in the cable so that you can really make a lot of these very easily. And there you have it. With just a little bit of practice, you can pick up a very valuable skill in fabricating these custom coaxial cables that every home builder needs. And you'll be invited over quite frequently as one of the few people that feel comfortable making professional cables to just the length for any home built project. Everyone back to building.